in this lecture series we, we are trying to understand the basics of radar systems radar means radio detection and ranging so it has got main two objectives one is the detection and another is to measure the distance of the target from the radar and the means by which it detects and measures the range is the radio wave now let us try to understand the history of this radar system we can divide this history into two parts one is pre world war 2 and another is post world war 2 first consider famous hardjes experiment during the year of nearly 1885 to 88 hardjes first demonstrated that we can transmit electromagnetic wave from one place to another place later on number of scientists have developed transmitter and receiving system in 1905 halsmeyer demonstrated use for detecting ships in presence of fog unfortunately at that time nobody was interested with this this kind of technology because halsmeyer said that that particular technology is very much suitable to avoid the collision between the ships however in 1922 us naval research laboratory detected wooden ship on the other side of the river and the research was carried out lot of research was carried out in 1925 using the similar kind of technology scientist measures the height of the ionospheres and lot of experiments were done in 1930 general engineers detected an aircraft with simple radar system because at that time aircraft becomes one of the major and important equipment for the battlefield or war now just before world war 2 lot of other inventions were done but like uh, people develop magnetron type of uh, tubes that can generate huge amount of uh, rf power in microwave region but after and during world war 2 army because mainly because of army they have seen that it is one of the most important kind of equipment used for war so lot of development took place during second world war at the same time after second world war because after second world war excessive amount of research took place in antenna microwave as well as electronics and all the inventions helped the radar technology so radar has deep military roots and it continues to be very important military equipment at the same time growing number of civil applications now it is so those are the background of this radar now we can try to understand the variety of radar applications just for examples so if we have ground based stationary monostatic 
radar. This is the type of radar. Monostatic means the transmitter and receiver are in the same geographic location. Now you divide this application into two categories. One is the civil application, another is the military application. So for this type of radar, we have different kind of civil application like weather radar, radar astronomy, traffic control, synthetic aperture radar, inverse synthetic aperture radar. And in military domain, we have air defense, missile defense, perimeter defense, something like that. Now, if we consider ground-based stationary but multi-static radar system, then the radar in civil application, we have radar astronomy. In military application, we have air defense, like fencing type of thing, missile defense, etc. For ground probing type radar, we have archaeology, ice, uh, soundings, etc. For civil application, for military application, we have tunnel detection, landmine detection, this type of applications are available for military applications. Now, if the radar is in is placed in some flying object like airborne or spaceborne system, and if the radar is monostatic in nature, then we have some kind of collision avoidance, altimeter. Altimeter is very essential for any sort of flying objects. Then imaging radar synthetic aperture radar which produces the image of the target then scatterometer this type of applications are there for military counterpart we have search and track type of radar in fuzzing imaging and targeting navigation this type of applications are there and for airborne spaceborne multi-static radar system for civil application we have interferometric synthetic aperture radar, then planetary exploration, etc. And for military application, we have covert type of radar. This is an example of space-borne imaging type of radar. So here radar is present, it transmits some pulses and based on that, it produces the image of the uh, ground or whatever we want. We can map our entire earth with the help of this type of space-borne imaging radar. Another example, like fencing radar, the ballistic uh, missile early warning system. So as you can see, there are big antennas are there and each antenna will cover huge uh, geographic locations. That means if some missile comes uh, from other part of the world, this uh, whole system will warn the, warn the corresponding uh, country long before the missile would, uh, actually comes to the target. So, this is a kind of fencing system. Another example is the weather, weather radar. We have in India, we have number of radars, space bone radars are available. And this type of radars gives us a lot of information about the cyclone, the pain, and all the uh, weather, all the, all the parameters related to weather. We have some, this is a, this is taken from tropical rainfall measuring mission satellite data from, for any location, you can determine the variation of rain rate actually radar de uh, determines the reflectivity and from reflectivity we can using some model we can de generate corresponding rain rate so it's a nice picture that shows the variation along with height so here the amount of rain is higher then we have some lowering of rain rate then again some 
higher frame rate etc so this type of variation is is possible to get with the help of radar another example of ground penetrating radar system and this is the radar so if you here we have the uh, transmitter and receiver system so this is the radar signal path so it determines is the this is for the agricultural purpose mapping of agricultural drainage pipes etc this is the mapping unmarked colonial era graves so the, all these things are possible this is the ground penetrating radar system now the characteristics of radar first of all it uses electromagnetic waves frequencies of the order of megahertz gigahertz terahertz and the propagation is governed by the maxwell's equation electromagnetic waves actually light is also an electromagnetic wave so it propagates at the speed of light in vacuum antennas or optics used to launch or receive the waves now the related technologies used acoustic waves like ultrasound seismic sonar these are they are they are actually a kind of radar but they are using some acoustic waves instead of electromagnetic waves now the active sensor this radar is nothing but an active sensor why it is active sensor because it provides its own illumination that means transmitter is present along with the radar system involves both a transmitter and receiver now related technologies are purely passive and such examples are used in radio astronomy radio meters in radio meters the principle is almost identical that it receives the signal unfortunately the signal is generated by the target itself that means it is not illuminated by the radar concepts and technologies used in radar radars are systems involving a wide range of technologies and concepts like signal processing antenna electronics communication electromagnetic waves etc an understanding of radar requires knowledge over this broad range of technologies and concepts as new technologies emerge and new concepts are developed radar capabilities can grow and improve radar measurement capabilities first of all it presence of target which is called the detection it it receive it measures the range of the target that is distance as well as the direction received signal strength that is useful for understanding of the target properties radial velocity with the help of doppler frequency shift special distribution like mapping various target characteristics like particle size distribution example is the pre precipitation surface roughness water content of soil snow etc motion characteristics like aircraft engine rotation rate breathing of some living things surface displacement subsidence example is the subsidence now we have different type of display this type of display is the plan position indicator it is in the polar format so receiver power controls intensity time controls the radius so this line moves in this way and it will produce the spots where target target is present now we have a scope display it is a xy format so receive power versus time and time is actually calibrated in terms of distance so by this is the transmitted pulse and this is the echo pulse the received pulse from the target so by measuring this time gap we can determine the distance another time kind of radar display is the echogram sometimes it is also produces image it is also xy format receive power controls intensity x axis is radar position y axis is the 
time or range time is mapped with the distance now consider the basics of radar measurement how it measures the distance transmitted signal propagates at speed of light through free space where the phase velocity vp is equal to c c is the light velocity so travel time from antenna to target is r by c so if this is the transmitter receiver is placed in the same plane, same point <coughs> we are transmitting a pulse of width say tau this pulse will move to the target and then it will return back to the receiver so travel time from antenna to target r by c it will take the same amount of time to return target back to antenna from target back to antenna it is again r by c so the total round trip time of flight is twice r by c that is addition of these two so at time t equal to zero transmit sequence begins now a slight delay until the transmit waveform exits the antenna it is possible these small internal delays are constant and typically ignored now timing calibration can remove these internal delays from range measurement so if we neglect that particular delay we can say that time of flight or round trip flight is twice r by vp or twice r by c if this medium is assumed to be vacuum now c is this so using that relation r equal to c into t by tau in meter we can closely approximate we have some close approximation that c is nearly equal to 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second uh, which corresponds to about 1 nanosecond per foot one way so this is how we can measure the range this is the basic principle of measurement of range or pulse radar so if we relate the range with time of flight so if the range is 2 meter time of flight is 30 nanometer if the range is nearly 29 meter that time of flight this range is nothing but uh, same as the basketball court length it is 193 nanosecond so in this way we can map it like 384 400 km if this is the range then the round trip time will, will be 2.56 second it is the mean orbit of the moon so in this way you can map you can understand the variation of range with time of light now and if the intervening medium is not free space then we have to consider the material properties so vp is equal to c by root over epsilon r where epsilon r is the refractive is the relative permittivity of that particular medium and generally the refractive index is proportional to the square root of the dielectric constant epsilon r is also called the dielectric constant so vp is equal to c by root over epsilon r or that is equal to c by n where n is the refractive index so if you consider dry snow refract uh, the permittivity relative permittivity is 1.17 corresponding refractive index is 1.08 for ice it is 3.17 and corresponding n is 1.78 so in this way you have different materials for water epsilon r is nearly 81 so corresponding refractive index is almost 9 so accordingly corresponding vp will change and you have to adjust the range according to the property of the material the typical radars have operating frequencies between 1 megahertz and terahertz band now question is why the lower limit is actually determined by the by a host of factors like antenna size if lambda is the wavelength then it is lambda wavelength is equal to vp by the frequency phase velocity by the frequency now if phase frequency is very very low then the corresponding 
lambda since it is in denominator corresponding lambda will be very high so obviously the antenna size is of the order of lambda so if lambda becomes very large the antenna size would be enormous so ultimately this antenna size restricts the use of frequency then ionosphere is another issue acts as variable rf reflector below about 30 megahertz in the resolution of the radar radar's range resolution is inversely related to the signal bandwidth so large bandwidth may be of the order of hundreds of megahertz may be required for some applications and are not achievable with lower frequency systems and ultimately the noise this is the relationship between frequency and wavelength so 30 gigahertz means 1 centimeter wavelength 11.8 gigahertz means nearly 1 inch 10 gigahertz means 3 centimeter so in this way for 60 gigahertz the corresponding wavelength is 5000 kilometer almost 186 kilohertz means 1 mile or 1.6 kilometer almost so in this way you have variation of frequency and wavelength and as you can see if for the lower frequency range corresponding wavelength is enormous so if this is the antenna size then it is impossible for us to build this type of antenna now external noise sources different noises noise are there first of all extraterrestrial noise coming from maybe from cosmos in galaxies and stars planets all of them are produces noise then we have atmospheric noise mostly coming from the lightning discharge also varies with geography season time of day etc etc then we have man-made noise these are incoherent noises they are coming from generally machinery ignition and switching devices power generation distribution and there are certain kind of coherent sources like computer other digital systems rf, RF transmissions etc etc we have some radar frequencies these are the generally accepted uh, radar frequency designations l band frequency range is 1 to 2 gigahertz s band 2 to 4 c band 4 to 8 x band 8 to 12 ku band 12 to 18 k band 18 to 27 ka band 27 to 40 v band 40 to 75 w band 75 to 110 gigahertz so these are the standard band designation for use for radar and all these bands are not useful for every kind of radar depending on the kind of radar or type of radar type of target that we are going to detect we have to select proper band of frequency so that's all for today Thank you.